So welcome everyone. Thanks for being here uh, right at lunchtime. I hope to not let you fall asleep. Um, I'm Ricardo Cacioli. I'm a site reliability engineer that try to keep uh, Wikipedia running. I work at the Wikimedia Foundation. That is the non-profit organization that basically is behind Wikipedia and all uh, its sister projects. But that's enough about me. Uh, today we will be talking about Cumin, uh, automation and orchestration made possible. Let's see. Um, Cumin is a Python framework and common line interface uh, that integrates with existing infrastructure that allows you to execute multiple commands in parallel on a selected number of hosts. And uh, automation isn't easy, but we are trying to make it possible. Um, it, it, Cumin basically allows and provides you a flexible, reliable, and scalable uh, way to execute whatever commands you need to run on multiple hosts, and these hosts will be dynamically selected based on your needs. Uh, it will allow to find gain select selecting your host. That is something that is usually not possible with with other solutions. So let's see what, what we will cover today. First we will see what Q problems Cumin is trying to solve. Uh, then we will go over what are the main components that, that uh, are part of Cumin. So basically the backends that allow you to select us from different uh, source of truths, uh, a grammar that allow you to combine those results, and then the transport that is basically what will be used to execute the commands on the target host. And then we will go over what are the execution strategies, another feature of Cumin, that allow basically to adapt to most use cases, and that's one of the main reasons that we, uh, we started writing this tool. And then we will go over a, a quick demo to, to show you Cumin in action. So, first of all, how we got here. Um, I'll, I will tell you our story, but this story is most common, and I'm sure you will, will be familiar with it. So you start at the start, we have just few few servers to configure, few hosts, and you start to do everything manually. There is no need of automation, no need of orchestration, no need of configuration management. Uh, just because it's too easy, you, you don't bother about the, the complexity. Then you start growing, and your number of servers start to grow, and you start doing some quick and easy automation here and there with just some bash script or Perl script, and things start to to get better, but then you continue to grow, and, and what do you do? Uh, you start to look into configuration management solution, and you go over all of them and, and pick one. In our case, Puppet was, was selected on, on the fall of 2008. And, and then we continue to grow, then we open a second data center, and basically double the number of hosts. At that point, the configuration management, it's still okay, will take care of the configuration of your host, but it will not be able to, to give you automation and orchestration. And more hosts you have, and in particular if you have them in multiple data centers, that's something very neat. And, and so we started looking for solution uh, of things that will allow us to do some orchestration and some automation across the fleet. And in our case, we found a solution that wasn't perfect because we didn't find anything in the, in, 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 in the open source software that would allow us to do that. Uh, but we chosen one anyway and was sold, not for the configuration management part because we, we, are, we are already using Puppet, but for the distributed SSH, basically, capability. And so we started using it. But having Puppet as a configuration management, that means that to use SALT for distributed SSH, we had to have Puppet configure salt grains on the target host to just have some host selection capability, but that was very limited, not integrated with Puppet in, a, in an easy way, and so it didn't allow us to do all the things that we wanted. And so we, at the end, we started deciding to write a new tool that in, uh, was Cumin, and that we wanted to allow us to do all the things that the other tools didn't, didn't didn't allow. And so basically, what we actually wanted, so the first thing that we wanted was to be able to target host in a very fine-grained way, uh, in a very dynamic way. We didn't want fixed list of hosts, we didn't want anything that was tightly coupled with the current status, but something that was dynamically gathered. So in this case, for example, we would like to address hosts that are in intersection of different 
of different uh, ensemble of hosts, like for example, Debian stretch host that have a puppet class nginx with parameter cluster equal foo, and then maybe that are not pulled in the cluster foo, or something like that. So we, will be, we want to be able to uh, address the host, for example, highlighted in red and blue, but maybe not the one in black, or dynamically change this selection very quickly. And so we wanted basically something that was uh, able to gather dynamic things from different sources of truth, different backends that allow to gather different lists of hosts and then mix them and combine them together with standard Boolean operators and parentheses, allowing you to write a simple query that uh, can mix them in the way you want in that moment. The other main feature that we wanted is basically how to execute things. Sometimes you just are checking some status, grab some info, or doing some simple cleanup, and you don't need uh, a very uh, safe way to do it, because those are safe commands, are harmless commands, that you want to execute across the fleet as quickly as possible, because you are just gapping something around the fleet or checking some status. And in this case, you just want to run them and get the output. But in other cases, you want to do more delicate stuff. For example, you want to pull some host from the cluster, restart the service, and pull it back. And you know that you can do that, not everyone at the same time, of course, so you want to do just few of the time, and then go on on the next one. So you want some back batching capabilities, but you also want control over them. Because if you run some batching things across a, a, a whole fleet, you don't want just to, to play go, to, to say go, and then forget. You want to check that the status is okay at all time. And so you want to be able to stop. So basically you wanted something that could do batching, but then stopping in the middle if at any point some success percentage was not met, some success criteria was not met. And so these was the, were the two main features that we actually, we actually wanted into Cumin. So let's see for a moment how, how we structure Cumin, basically what are, what are its main components. So we have a global grammar that is the one that allows us to combine results from different backends. And from one side we have the backends, and right now we already have PuppetDB, uh, OpenStack API, uh, SSH on host, and others that are coming and we are writing. But also, it's possible to plug in external backends that you write. You just write a, a single class in Python, and you can plug in whatever backend that is not yet part of, of Qum itself. And, and you can combine results from all of them. And it's very easy to write, to write a new backend. I mean, it's, uh, it's just one file, very, very easy. It depends on your API, of course, but in general, it's very easy. And then, given the global grammar, that is basically simply uh, having parentheses, Boolean operator, and be able to combine results of all of them, uh, you can select things from different source of truth, from your uh, cluster management, from your inventory, uh, whatever you, you have and you want to combine, and then use Qmin, just execute the commands on the, on the resulting subset of host. And the transport is the, the one that allows you to execute things over the host. So right now we just implemented SSH. Um, we chose SSH uh, for two main reasons. Uh, in implied security, super simple. It doesn't require any dependency on the target host. So the only thing that you need is a host with Qmin master, and you don't need anything else on the target host, just as a SSH server and the capability from the, to connect from the Qmin master. Uh, but we are thinking of adding additional transport layers. In particular, we are looking for HTTP, HTTPS for uh, RESTful API that might need to, uh, for example, I don't know, you have an Elasticsearch cluster you want to connect to uh, or multiple Elasticsearch cluster you want to connect to the API, or for example, we are looking to do uh, MySQL transport to connect to, to, to cluster of MySQL servers. So those are things that, that will come probably in the next future of Qmin. Uh, let's check also what are other Qmin features that we took into account and we are fundamentally in, 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 their, in, its, in its capabilities. So the execution strategies are the thing that I showed you before, and I will go a little bit more in detail now. Um, so basically, we wanted the batch size. So we have, uh, you can select batch size, and you can select a batch sleep. Batches are implemented 
as a sliding window. So if you start with batch 10, you will start with 10 hosts, and then as soon as one host will finish, you will start uh, scheduling the ex execution of the commands on the next host and, and going on. But you can select also a batch sleep between hosts. So basically, before scheduling the next host, it will sleep for such amount of time. This allows, for example, of doing things completely sequentially. You can do one host at a time with five minutes sleep in the middle and do a very slow Rollinger start of, of your whole fleet, for example. At the same time, when you use batch, you, you, we have the concept of success percentage or success ratio. Uh, basically, what that means is that for each batch, it will, at the end, when, when every host completes the execution of a command, it will calculate the success percentage of all the hosts that have executed already a command. And if that percentage is over your threshold, then it will go and execute and schedule the next host. Otherwise, it will stop because it says that it considered that a failure. So you can, by, defi by, de uh, by default, he has a 100% success ratio. That means that at the first fault, it will stop. But at the first failure, sorry. But you can change that and decide what is your, your success acceptable ratio. Um, by default, Cumin uh, consider every executed command that exit with a different from zero exit status as a failure. But you can, of course, uh, change that uh, via an, uh, a command line option, or if you're using it as a library in Python, you can define the whole list of acceptable exit codes that you consider successful. And that, uh, for example, in our case, is very useful with Puppet that usually exit, uh, has a different exit code even if they're successful, but uh, in, in test mode, it uh, has a different exit code. Uh, the other things that you can, you can do are timeouts, so basically pair host timeout. so every command that is executed in each host, you can set, set a timeout or you can set a global timeout of the whole execution, given what, what are your needs, basically. Um, other small features are, for example, interactive mode, that basically when you run Cumin, at the end, it will run normally, but in the end, instead of just exiting, it will drop you into Python shell in which they are already preloaded the result, and you can ma mangle the results directly uh, in, a, in a Python shell. And that's pretty uh, useful in some cases. And the other one are different output formats. So by default, it just prints the output, but you can select a JSON or TXT format in which they will be um, printed in an easy way for post-processing uh, with different tools, basically. And the other feature of Cumin uh, that is inherited from, from the library that we choose to do SSH, that is Cluster Shell, that is a very powerful Python library that comes from the HPC world, and is to aggregate results. So basically, when you run the same command across the whole fleet, if they have the same output, all the hosts that have the same output are grouped to together, and you will just see one line with the list of hosts that match and the output. So if you're running this over 100 of us, you don't have a very long output, but it's much more compact and very useful for checking things and, and immediately understand how many hosts have a, that output and how many hosts and which one have a different output. So let's see for a moment uh, a quick demo of, of Cumin in action. Let me see if I can. Sorry, once less. I hope it's, it's visible. So, first of all, let's let's take a quick look at Cumin options. Um, so, as you can see, this is of course everything that I'm saying. I'm showing here is using Cumin as a command line uh, tool. Uh, it can be perfectly used and it's very simple as a library, Python library. So you just import Cumin and in the documentation it's very clearly, there are a lot of examples of, of how to use it. Uh, so the, basically what you run is Cumin, a host query, that is your query that you want to select the host, and a series of commands that you want to execute, one or more. And uh, by default it reads a configuration that it's, uh, it's usually in TC Cumin, but you can change it and you can uh, pick a different one. Uh, the mode is what, uh, it's a very specific thing that we decided to do. 
So basically, when you are running multiple commands, you have basically two ways of doing that. I mean, there are many, but the most common ways is I want to run this command on all the hosts, and then if it's successful, run the second command on all the hosts that were successful. So basically, you can run the first command of a hundred hosts have on, I don't know, 10 failures, and that 10 failures is within your success ratio, and then you go and you will execute the next command only on the 90 hosts that were successful. If instead your success ratio was, I don't know, 95%, that will not match, will just run the first command and stop. And this is we call a sync mode, basically. And then there is the async mode in which you don't care about uh, this uh, synchronicity about the, the cluster, and you just run the first, the second, the third command, or whatever they are, in each host independently. So in each host, if one command fails, it will not run the others, but it will not wait for the other, for the other hosts. So they are independent between them, and they are basically uh, vertically independent, and each one will execute uh, their commands. So then we have the other options that uh, we'll see that are basically the batch, the timeout, um, output, sleep, interactive mode, and all basically the, the option that I, I talk about. And then we, let's see how, how we can do basically a simple, a simple query. In this case, we, have, we are using PuppetDB as a backend. And so this is a very simple syntax to say, I want all the hosts the match class nginx. And given that I didn't put any command, it will assume that it's in dry run mode and just exit after listing the matching hosts. The matching hosts also, they are listed in a very compact way. This is also thanks to cluster shell library that use a node set that are basically Python sets but uh, with additional features. And one of those is basically to automatically compress uh, the host uh, in, in, in a very compact syn uh, syntax, in particular if you have a uh, number range in your, in your host names. And uh, so basically, for example, to say just the puppet, DB, a puppet class that is applied, you, we do that. And in this case, we are just checking all the hosts that match a resource of type file whose title is that one. So basically, we are checking uh, if that file is managed by puppet, that will be recorded in PuppetDB as a resource, a file resource, and the title of that file resource is the, is the path, usually, the path of where you are saving it, and you can check very quickly and target those hosts based, based on, on, on specific resources. So not only classes, but, but also very, very specific resources or facts. Um, in this case, we are using the kind of new paradigm of Puppet roles and Puppet profiles, so in this case, it's a role. It's a role called MediaWiki App Servers, and this will match uh, the host that, that have this role applied to them. And uh, this is a slightly more complex query that is using the global grammar. So in this case, I'm mixing things from different uh, backend. Uh, it's just an example. They are both PuppetDB backends, but are different queries. So I can do queries that PuppetDB API don't allow me to do. And I'm asking for all the hosts that have a class engine X and also all the hosts that have a fact that says that the, the distribution name is Jesse, is Debian Jesse. So in this case, I'm getting a sub-selection of hosts and I can do uh, and and not, or, XOR and combine them with parentheses. So basically, uh, there is no, no limitation for, for the combination of hosts. Uh, as you can see, this can become quite long. The queries can become quite long. So we develop aliases. Uh, aliases are basically in co a configuration file in which we, you can just say, I want an alias. In this case, AMW is an alias for us. And that can be a very complex query. It doesn't matter. It's in a configuration file. So all the common queries that you might have, you can just save them in an alias. And it will be very, very easy to, uh, to, re to recall them when you want. So in this case, let's run a very uh, simple thing. Um, I'm checking uh, if Apache, do a, Apache 2 uh, process on systemctl is active on a, target, a series of target hosts. And I very quickly can see that one host has it inactive, and all the other hosts have, the, have it active. And QMI is telling me very 
clearly at the end that one percent that the one host didn't didn't execute it that failed because the exit code of that command was not zero and it lists me where, where are the hosts that succeed so from these I can basically just if I want to do some next command based on this output I can just copy and paste the list of hosts that the subgroups of successful and failure and failing host are there and use cumin again with that list of hosts because I can just put um, those things there so a, a little bit more complex example with two commands because this was just a single command um, we can run the same thing but then I want to get the status to know for, since how much time the host uh, sorry the service was active and in this case it will just run as the same concept but I, I can show you better here so as you can see I'm using the async mode in this case and uh, um, what I'm telling is basically to run those common independently because I don't care to run the status on all the hosts and then to run uh, the basically sorry the is active on all the hosts and then running the status and gapping for the the time it was active on on all the hosts after that I just run both commands on on all the hosts at the same time and as you can see group the output together so I know that 44 hosts were uh, basically Apache 2 was restarted three weeks and four days ago and was most likely for, for a security upgrade and in this case I'm using batches so it will be a little bit lower I'm using batches of five and I set a success percentage of 80 that means that I accept 80 percent success uh, and only 20 percent failure for each batch of five and I know already that be given this same list of us and in this case sorry uh, is using the sync mode so basically it's in this case I'm running first one command on all the host and then um, and then the second command only on the one that that succeeded and so this is going slowly because it's a batch of five and we'll do the same so this is a very uh, quick example of how we use cumin every day at the Wikimedia and we have really had a lot of uh, good results so far and a lot of people are using them it uh, so just to recap we have seen that cumin has a powerful query syntax to select hosts uh, allow to have multiple execution strategies it aggregates the output in a smart way and reports reliably all the failures uh, can be used as a command line tool or as a Python framework library uh, in your other automation or, or orchestration tools. And uh, to have more information on how to find the source code, uh, the, the releases on PyPy, releases on GitHub, uh, documentation, and how we use it at Wikimedia Foundation, it's all listed on the, the all the links are listed on the page, uh, on the first page for this talk and all my contacts are on the speaker profile page on FOSDEM uh, for this talk and you can find them just searching for Cumin FOSDEM and optionally my name um, on any, any uh, search engine. So thank you very much uh, for being here and let me know if you have any questions. What do you mean? Uh, this is a sort of deployment scenario where, okay. you, where uh, you have redundancy. So yeah. If you, for example, if you pass the eighty percent successful part, you can say, okay, you can start switching over load balancers. I don't care about the last twenty percent. Okay. They, they might be a bit slower, maybe one percent will fail, and I have to. So for that, you can set a very small timeout. So if your normal common is, I don't know, 10 seconds, you can set some out to 20 just to be on the safe side, and they will fail quickly. Um, the other option, uh, it doesn't have exactly that, that feature so that after success already start the second one because um, we want to 
be reliable and execute, like if you want to do in sync mode, you execute the first one on all of them, because you don't know if the next one will be actually a uh, success or failing. So um, we, you can do that with a short amount of shell So this, this threshold success, what do you use for Like when you use batches, it's calculated for each, uh, at, any, at any time a host, uh, execute a command, so when you finish to execute a command, it will calculate the success percentage, and if it's not met, it will not schedule again, yeah. and it will stop there. But it's a yeah, it's a safety feature, absolutely. That's because, uh, like, if you want to do a batch of three, and then I don't know, you accept one failure on every three, but it calculates on the on the whole thing, so uh, it will go. But if the first two fails, it will stop, for example, yeah. because in the first batch is you have very few holes and. It's a safety feature, definitely. Okay, that's all we got. So let's let's pop for Ricardo again. And I'll be here for if you have any questions. Yeah, we'll, we'll be outside. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Yeah.